Welcome back everyone to another skill cap tier list where with the help of our challenger players and using the most recent data We break down the changes and set you guys up with how the meta will be shaping out for 11.12 The Dr. Mundo rework will hit live servers this patch along with some much needed Wukong nerfs and for some odd reason Malphite is being buffed Which champion do you think has the worst design in the entire game? Not a huge fan of RNG, so Zoe would have to be my pick. Losing lane due to lucky drops from W is so frustrating, especially because it doesn't take any sort of skill. You can be smashing lane and all of a sudden a redemption pops up and the lane is suddenly lost. So who would your pick be for the worst game design? Let us know down in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe and stay up to date with all the content we have planned. And with that said, let's get into it. Mundo Rework will be hitting the rift a few days into the patch, so we'll start by breaking down the changes. Mundo's passive is called Goes Where He Pleases, and will allow Mundo to resist the first immobilizing effect that hits him, but he'll lose 7% current health and drop a chemical canister nearby that lasts for 7 seconds. Moving over the canister restores 8% max health and reduces the passive cooldown by 15 seconds. This passive has a 45 scaling to 15 second cooldown. Mundo will have a second part to his passive where he regenerates 2% max health every 5 seconds. Mundo Q is Infected Bone Saw and is pretty much the exact same ability as before. It costs 50 health to use and is on a 4 second cooldown. You'll hurl a cleaver at the enemy dealing percent current health damage and slowing them. Mundo W is called Heart Zapper. The spell costs 5% current health and has a cooldown of 17 scaling to 15 seconds. Mundo charges a defibrillator which deals 20 scaling to 80 magic damage each second for 4 seconds to nearby enemies. While the spell is active, he stores 25 scaling to 45% of damage taken as gray health. On recast, Mundo can detonate the defibrillator, dealing 7% bonus health plus 20 scaling to 80 magic damage to nearby enemies. If this cast hits at least one champion, Mundo restores 100% of gray health. If no champions are hit, Mundo restores 50% gray health. E is called Blunt Force Trauma. The spell costs 10 health and has a cooldown of 8 scaling to 6 seconds. Passively, Mundo gains 15 scaling to 35 attack damage based on missing health. The active portion causes Mundo to swing his medical bag, causing his next attack to deal an additional 5 scaling to 45 plus 7% bonus health damage increased by 60% based on his missing health. If the enemy is killed, Mundo swats them away, dealing minimum damage to all enemies they pass through. Lastly, Mundo's ultimate is Maximum Dosage. The spell is no cost and is on a 110 scaling to 90 second cooldown. Upon activation, Mundo restores 20% missing health, then gains 15 scaling to 35% move speed, 4 scaling to 7% bonus health attack damage, and regenerates 20 scaling to 70% max health over 10 seconds. Overall, Riot has done a solid job at keeping Mundo's theme intact while adding a bunch of great new features to his kit. We really like the change to his ult where it no longer drains health on activation and instead just instantly heals him. It's going to take a couple days to really understand Mundo's strength, so take his ranking on the tier list with a grain of salt. We'll be keeping a close eye on Mundo and have a very accurate ranking for our mid-patch update tier list, so be sure to watch out for that. For now, he will be placed in A tier. The Monkey King has been on top of his throne for a little too long, so Riot will be toning him down for 11.12. An AD per level nerf going from 4 down to 3.5 combined with a Q bonus AD ratio nerf dropping from 50 down to 45% is what Riot is targeting. These nerfs are pretty substantial, but won't be enough to drag Wukong down the tier list. You have to keep in mind, Wukong's two core items in Sunderer and Black Cleaver were buffed last patch, and he's been really far ahead of most top lane picks. The nerfs will bring him in line with the other top tier champs, but won't push Wukong out of OP. A sustained nerf to Nasus is being issued, as his passive lifesteal will drop from 12 scaling to 24%, down to 10 scaling to 22%. Very similar to Wukong, this nerf is more of a small wound than a killing blow, and won't negatively affect Nasus' power level by a substantial amount. It's not much of a surprise both Wukong and Nasus are nerfed, because they saw heavy indirect buffs last patch due to their two core items seeing buffs. At the very most, the nerf will drop Nasus to where he was before the item changes, which was still an S tier top lane pick. An AD per level nerf will hit Gnar, going from 59 down to 57. This is definitely more of a competitive play nerf, as solo Q Gnar has been in a pretty balanced state over the past few patches. We won't be dropping Gnar further down the tier list as a result of this change, but he'll now be fully locked in as an A tier top laner. 
Riot absolutely hates Renekton mains as he's being targeted for more nerfs in 11.12. In all seriousness though, just like Gnar, Renekton has been a staple in pro play for a while, so that's why he's being nerfed. Q heal per unit hit is going from 3 scaling to 7 down to 2 scaling to 6. The bonus AD ratio on the heal will drop from 4 down to 3%. Empowered Q heal per unit is going from 9 scaling to 21 down to 6 scaling to 18, while the bonus AD ratio drops from 12 down to 9%. For solo Q Renekton, these nerfs are just added salt to the wound as he's been struggling to find any footing the past while now. Renekton will continue to slot into a B tier positioning on our tier list. Of all top laners who are in need of buffs, it's kinda crazy to see Malphite on the receiving end for 11.12. W on hit damage will be increased from 10 scaling to 50 up to 15 scaling to 55. The armor ratio will be bumped up as well, going from 10 to 15%. These direct buffs combined with the frozen heart buffs from 11.11 .11, will put Malphite back in a top tier position, especially for the lower ranks. The rock will be placed in our S tier as a very solid pickup. A mana per level buff will be issued to Lowey going from 40 up to 50. You'd really think Riot would give us more than a little tease here, as it's been such a long time since Alawi's been in meta. Divine Sundra buffs are helping Alawi out quite a bit, so maybe they don't want to risk going overboard, but nonetheless, Alawi will maintain her spot as an A tier top laner. So, with all those top lane changes covered, our tier list will feature Wukong, Shen, and Set as the three most powerful picks of the patch. Even though there are many top lane changes, the overall movement on the tier list is very light. Like we said, we'll have a much better indication on Mundo's strength as the patch progresses, so don't look too much into his ranking just yet. As for any new release or rework champ, if your main goal is to climb, we wouldn't advise playing that pick and rank the first week anyways. We have Wukong, Garen, and Nasus slotting in as the best champs for low elo, while Set, Wukong, and Gwen are the three best ban options. Udyr is being torn down once again for 11.12 as his R cone damage is hit, going from 60 scaling to 310 down to 50 scaling to 275. The base damage from R is one of the major factors as to why tank Udyr can work so well. Since Riot is nerfing the spell quite heavily, the negative effects will be felt. Although Udyr may see some priority in pro play, he will be placed in B tier as an average solo queue pickup. Ramus is back for 11.12 as his W bonus armor is being propelled from 30 up to 40, while his ultimate cooldown is reduced from 130 scaling to 90 seconds down to 110 scaling to 80 seconds. Things are definitely looking up for Ramus as Morgana has fallen out of meta and Elise is being played way less after her nerfs from last patch. The majority of highly contested junglers are AD, so these armor buffs are huge. Ramus will be placed in A tier, but we see him very close to breaking into S with one more positive change. So after just two patches of being the worst jungler in the game, Hecarim will be back as a great carry pick for 11.12. Armor per level is going from 32 up to 35, while his Q bonus AD ratio is bumped up from 75 to 85%. Divine Sunderer Hecarim is already very strong, so once people catch on to the build combined with these buffs, it will be like Heck was never even gone. The Pony will be placed in A tier. A jungler I've only seen a handful of times in Season 11 being Jarvan is receiving a much needed buff. W cooldown is going from 12 to 9 seconds, a solid buff to give Jarvan a little more consistent durability throughout extended fights. Jarvan is now a worthwhile pickup as he'll be placed in our A tier. So our jungle tier list will feature Kha'Zix, Shin Zhao, and Shaco as the most broken picks of the patch. Many junglers have been buffed over the past couple patches, leading to lots of great A tier carry options. As for Mundo, just like top lane, we'll be placing him in A tier and giving you guys a much more accurate update during our mid patch tier list once we gather more information on his strength. Ramus, Shin Zhao, and Fiddle are our three low elo recommendations, while Shaco, Shin Zhao, and Kha'Zix are highest priority on the ban list. Talon will see a nerf to his poke power early on in lane as the initial W damage is being reduced while the return damage is increased. Initial goes from 45 scaling to 105 down to 40 scaling to 80. AD ratio drops from 55 down to 40. Return damage is bumped up from 45 scaling to 145 to now 50 scaling to 170. AD ratio jumps up from 70 to 80%. Overall, this change won't really impact Talon's wave clear or all-in damage potential, but will hurt his early poke if you're not able to land both portions of W. It's a pretty minor nerf, and as a result, Talon will remain in S tier. If you'd even call him a mid laner nowadays, Ziggs will be issued a few really nice buffs. Q damage is increased from 85 scaling to 265 up to 85 scaling to 285. 
ultimate medium and long range missile speed is going from 1550 all the way up to 2250. The alt change is the one I'm really excited for as the consistency in landing Zig's alt will be so much greater now. Zig's artillery buddy Zareth saw some buffs a few patches back that pushed him into A tier and Zig's will follow suit thanks to his buffs. Other than Ziggs jumping up a tier, we have a very stagnant patch in regards to the mid lane meta. Silas dodged the nerf bat once again, so he'll remain in OP tier alongside Rumble and Zed. Diana, Malz, and Annie are the best picks to climb low elo the fastest, while Vlad, Silas, and Zed are great ban options. Heading down to bot lane, we have just a few changes and we'll start off with Kaisa. Q cooldown is being increased early on, going from 8 scaling to 6 seconds up to 10 scaling to 6 seconds. Kaisa scales extremely well, so this nerf is trying to target her weaker phase and make her more exploitable early on. With other marksmen like Ezreal recently buffed, we see Kaisa falling to the wayside for 11.12 as a good pickup but nothing special. A tier is where Kaisa will be placed. The second AD carry nerf this patch will be Varus, as his W bonus damage will be lowered from 10.8 scaling to 25.2%, down to 9 scaling to 21% missing health. Kaisa is let off the hook with her nerf once she reaches level 9, but Varus is hit at all stages of the game with this change. Hail of Blades nerf's last patch saw a slight negative effect, and combined with this nerf will force us to drop Varus from A down to B tier. Looks like Riot is taking another attempt at making Aphelios a little less unplayable with a bunch of different changes. Magic Resist is going up from 26 to 30. AD per level gets a boost from 2.4 up to 3. Severum Q number of attacks is going from 6 plus 1 per 33% attack speed up to 6 plus 1 per 50% attack speed. Nice buff to the Phantom Dancer build with this one. Severum Q damage per attack is going from 10 scaling to 30 plus 21 scaling to 30% AD to now 10 scaling to 40 plus 20 scaling to 35% AD. Severum passive healing on basic attacks is being lowered from 3 scaling to 20% down to 3 scaling to 10%. Severum passive healing on abilities, however, is going up from 3 scaling to 20% to now 9 scaling to 30%. Crescendum Q damage per attack will be increased from 25 scaling to 85 plus 35 scaling to 50% AD up to 31 scaling to 100 plus 40 scaling to 60% AD. Crescendum Mini Chakram damage is lowered from 0.24 AD down to 0.15 AD. Overall, Aphelios walks away from these changes with a net positive outlook, however it won't be anything to get out of bed for. Aphelios will remain a bottom tier ADC for solo queue as he'll be placed in our B tier. Taking a look at our complete ADC tier list, we have Ezreal jumping up another slot into OP tier thanks to his buffs last patch and the Divine Sunderer changes. Sunderer Ezreal users are winning 53% of the time right now, which is just insane compared to the 48% of ER. 45% of players still build ER though, so make the swap over and enjoy your Ezreal free low. Ziggs buffs this patch, turn him into a really great S tier carry pick, so if you're in need of an AP champ to add to your pool, we would highly recommend the Hexplosive Yordle. It's not just Ziggs though, other AP carries like Swain, Seraphine, and Vagar are so great for solo Q2 since they're very simple and reliable picks. Our top 3 low elo recommendations for bot lane are Vagar, Misfortune, and Sivir. Best bans for 11.2 will be Vayne, Ezreal, and Jin. Not a single change to support means no considerable movement on the tier list. Lulu and Senna are our two OP picks for 11.12. If you're not already abusing Divine Sunder or Senna, then what are you waiting for? Way too many Senna players are still building Kraken when the build of Divine into Cleaver is extremely broken right now. Just like for Ezreal, stats back this up even further, as Senna's who build Divine win 55% of the time compared to Kraken users at 49%. Long story short, Divine is busted right now, and anyone who can abuse it should be. The best low elo picks of the patch are Brand, Leona, and Zyra. You'll get the most value out of banning one of Leona, Thresh, or Lulu. And remember, if you want to improve fast and get the rank you've always wanted, then check out skillcap.com. Link in the description below. Alright everyone, that's going to be all for the patch 11.12 tier list update. To catch our mid-patch update tier list where we break down any new trends that emerge throughout 11.12, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching, good luck in solo queue, and have a great day.